Hello everyone, my name is Philip Yeager. I'd like to introduce myself to you. I teach some of the financial accounting, along with Cindy Simpson, Gary Bomash, and Michael McMillan. All right. Now, I'm going to do the second part of Module 7, and I start on page 60 of the book. Now, I'm going to do only this chapter. This chapter I do a little different than the other chapters. This chapter, I use the questions to explain the concepts. All right? But normally, on other chapters, I use a handout or I use the text. But in this chapter, I found over the years, it's easier to explain the concepts just using the multiple choice. Now, I'm going to start with multiple choice 31, and what this chapter deals with is accrual accounting. Now, remember, if you're not on the accrual basis, you violate GAAP, and I'm sure Cindy mentioned that to you. Now, what is the accrual basis? Examples. Well, if I pay for insurance in advance, or any prepaid expense, I'm supposed to debit a prepaid asset and credit cash. Now, that prepaid asset is normally a current asset, and as it expires, it will be converted from an asset to an expense. So at the end of the year, or the end of the period, you'll credit the prepaid asset and debit some type of expense, like prepaid insurance. You pay it, you debit prepaid insurance, credit cash. For the amount that has expired during the year, you'll debit the insurance expense, credit prepaid insurance. Now, what are other items in accrual accounting? Well, when you get the bonds, the amortization of unamortized discount or unamortized premium, that's accrual accounting. Another journal entry that's accrual accounting is when you write off bad debt expense. All right? We use the allowance method. All right? For example, if you can actually estimate the collectability of your receivables, you're required to debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts or allowance for uncollectibles for those bad debts that you feel will be uncollectible in the future based on prior experience. Then the entry to record depreciation expense. That is accrual accounting. Also, at the end of the year, if being on the accrual basis, we have to show our income, the income that was collected and earned during the year, and also we have to show on our books the income that was earned but not collected. So what we do is we have to go through and see how much we are owed at the end of the year by debiting accounts receivable and crediting income. Now, also, we have to do the same thing for the expense side. We have to figure out how many expenses we have at the end of the year that we owe that have not been paid. So we normally debit some expenses, credit accounts payable, or credit accrued expenses payable. Now, if anybody pays us for services in advance under the accrual basis, we debit cash and credit unearned revenue. And then, as the unearned revenue is earned, we debit unearned revenue and credit revenue earned. Now, sometimes, instead of calling it unearned revenue, they call it deferred revenue. All right? It's a deferred revenue account. And normally, unearned revenue is a current liability. Now, let's look at questions on these areas. All right, we're going to start with multiple choice number 31. Now, multiple choice 31 deals with prepaid expenses. Now, let's read the question. An analysis of Thrift Corporation's unadjusted prepaid expense account at December 31st, 08, revealed the following. Now, let's look at what they're asking for in the question. And it's December 31st, 08 balance sheet. What amount should Thrift report as prepaid expenses? Now, let's look at that RT account. We have an opening balance of prepaid expenses of $1,500. Now, this $1,500 was actually paid on July 1st of 2007 and expired on June 30th of 08. 
Now, therefore, all of this $1,500 would have been used up or expired. So therefore, we're going to reduce this because all of this has expired. Once again, this went from 7107 to 630 of 08. So by 1231.08, it's all expired. Now, let's go to the next thing. Thrift paid an annual premium of 3000 on July 1st, 07. So therefore, on July 1st, 07, they would have paid $3,000. And once again, all right, this policy all right, expires June 30th of 08. Now, therefore, all right, all of this has expired, all right, by December 31st of 08. So we got here zero. Now, it says here, a $3,200 annual insurance premium payment was made by July 1st of 08. So therefore, the next thing is, they make a payment on July 1st of 08, expiring on June 30th of 09 of $3,200. Now, half of this expired at December 31st, 08. So therefore, December 31st, 08, half of this is still prepaid. So therefore, we take $1,600. That's the amount that expired during 08. Now we have the next one. A $2,000 advance rental payment for a warehouse leased for one year beginning January 1st, 07. Oh, I'm sorry, 09. Now, please note, this lease starts running January 1st, 09. So therefore, at December 31st, 08, all of this is prepaid. So I'm going to put this as all prepaid. Now let's see what our balance is at 1231 of 08. All right, we have here $5,200 and we have $1,600. So therefore, the balance is $3,600. $3,600, my answer there is B, all right? Mr. Cameraman, can I bother you for a calculator, please? All right, a calculator. Now, all right, do we get, all right, I'll get a calculator in a second. Now, oh, here it is. I got a calculator right in front of me. All right, I didn't see him bring it over. All right, now, sneaky guy, sneaky guy. All right, now, let's go to the next question. And this deals with unearned revenue, all right? By the way, question 31, don't forget, what's the answer? A, A, okay, A, do we get that? I'm sorry, the answer is B, why am I saying A, all right? The question to number 31 is B, I apologize. All right, now, let's go to the next thing, and that deals with unearned revenue. Now remember, unearned revenue is a current liability. It appears on the balance sheet as a current liability because it's income that's been received in advance but not earned. Now, question 33 talks about the Anine Video Mart who sells one and two year mail order subscriptions for its video of the month business. Subscriptions are collected in advance and are credited to sales. Well, that's incorrect. They shouldn't do that. They should debit subscription collected in advance as a debit to subscription receivable and credited to unearned revenue, unearned revenue. Now, it says here, an analysis of the recorded sales activity revealed the following. They show you the sales for 07, 08, subtract the cancellations, and then they give you the expirations of the subscriptions. Now, in Anin's December 31st, 08 balance sheet, the balance for unearned subscription revenue should be what? Now, the question is this. If they sell subscriptions to their video of the month business, when do they earn revenue? And the answer is when the subscription expires. So what we want to do is we want to see all subscriptions 
because we're looking for the unearned revenue at December 31st, 08. So if we're looking for the amount that's unearned at December 31st, 08, all right, what we're going to look at is the subscriptions that expired after 08 and whatever expired after December 31st, 08 would be unearned at December 31st, 08. Let me repeat this. Anything that expires after 08 was unearned at the date of December 31st, 08. Now let's look at these subscription expirations. 2007. Of 2007, we have 120,000. Now what is that 120,000? Well, that was the subscription that expired in 07 for 07 sales. Now, in 2008, we had subscription expirations. 155, that's from the 2007 sales. And then we have 130,000 from the 2008 sales. So in 2008, what expired? 155 from 2007 sales and 130,000 from 2008 sales. And then in 2009, what expired? 125 of 2007 sales and 200,000 of 2008 sales. Now, what subscri uh, what sorry, what expired in 2010? Well, what expired in 2010 was $140,000 of 2008 sales. Now, let's figure out how we're going to get the amount unearned. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to December 31st of 08. And where it says subscription expirations, all right, at 2008, we're going to underline the 155 and the 130. Okay? So at December 31st, 08, 155,000 has expired. Put it under the line under that. And 130 has expired. Put 130. Now, everything after that is unearned at that date, December 31st, 08. Now, what is that? Well, it's the 125. All right, from the 2009 expiration, the 200,000 from the 2009 expiration. So so far that's 325. Now, what else still was expired at 2010? 140,000. Well, that expired at 2010, but at December 31st, 08, that was still what? Unearned. So we're going to add 140 to that. So let's get the amount that's unearned. Anything after the subscription expirations for 2008 is unearned at that date. And it is the 125, 200,000, which is 325, plus the 140 gives us a total of 465. And my answer is C. C is in Charles. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is gift certificates. If a store sells gift certificates, when do they earn the revenue? Well, they earn the revenue in one of two situations. One, when the gift certificates are redeemed, all right, or when the gift certificates expire. Now, when you sell a gift certificate as a department store, the department store will debit cash and credit unearned revenue. That's when they sell the gift certificates. Now, remember what I told you, as they expire, or as they're redeemed, you'll debit unearned revenue and credit revenue from redemption of gift certificates. Now let's look at multiple choice number 34. Regal Department Store sells gift certificates redeemable for store merchandise that expire one year after their issuance. Regal has the following information pertaining to its gift certificates, sales, and redemptions. Now, let's just go down to the requirements. Regal's experience indicates that 10% of all gift certificates sold will not be redeemed. In its December 31st, 08 balance sheet, what should Regal report as unearned revenue? So they want the unearned revenue at December 31st of 08. So I'm just going to set up a general account. 
We'll just call it unearned revenue. In the real world, they might call it unearned revenue from gift certificates. Now, it has an opening balance unredeemed at 1231.07 of 75000 So at December 31st, 07, we have a liability unearned of $75,000. Now, let's read on here. In 2008, they sold $250,000. So therefore, all right, in 2008, they sold $250,000 of gift certificates. Notice I put it into unearned revenue. Now, let's go down again. 2008, they had redemptions of prior year sales, all right, $25,000. Now, they redeemed, let's call this our 1231.07 sales, all right, they redeemed of the $75,000, all right, they redeemed $25,000. $1,000. Now, also, they had 2008 redemptions of current year sales, 175. All right. So on these 2008, we're going to debit 175. All right. Now let's look at the additional information. Regal's experience indicates that 10% of the gift certificate sold will not be redeemed. All right. And also, don't forget, gift certificates. All right, expire one year after issuance. Now let's go back to the oldest. All right, here's the 123107 ones. 2575. The amount that's still unearned for the 07 is 50,000. Well, remember, one year later, at 1231 of 08, the remaining $50,000 will expire. So we'll debit that 50,000. Does everyone see that? All right, we actually redeemed 25,000 of the 123107 gift certificates, our opening balance. But whatever was not redeemed is going to expire at 123108, which would be 50,000. <clears> now, one more thing. 10% of gift certificates sold will not be redeemed. All right, now, in 2008, 10% was sold, 250,000. Therefore, for 2008, 10% of these, or 25,000, will not be redeemed. So they will be earned. Now with that in mind, let's get the balance in our unearned revenue. At 12.31 of 08. Now what we do is this, all right? We look down here, 75 and 250 is 325,000 in credits. All right, now, for this one, I'm going to have to use my trusty calculator. All right, I got 25,000. I have 175. I have 50. And I have 25,000. So I have a total of 275,000 in debits. So I have 275 in debits, 325 in credits. All right, so what's my balance of my account at 1231.08? It is 50 thousand dollars fifty thousand so my answer is D as in dog D as in dog alright now let's go on here alright let's go to the next question let me see my next question and that is question number 38 alright 38 now they often give a multiple choice which a company is on the accrual basis and how do you know they're on the accrual basis look at 38 they have royalty receivables and unearned royalties. That tells me they're on the accrual basis. And they give you changes in those accounts. And then they'll ask you to come up with a specific amount. Now, let's see what happened here at December 31st balance sheet. All right, this is December 31st from 07 to 08. Royalty receivable went from 90000 down to 85,000. Look at the years, all right? All right. Sometimes they give you the 07 in the first column, all right? Or the 08 in the first column. So look to see which direction it went. <clears throat> now, the receivables went from 90,000 in 07 to 85,000 in 08. So they went down by 5,000. Now, the unearned royalties 
which is a credit balance, went from 60 at 1231.07 to 40 at 1231.08. And they told us during 2008, Decker received royalty remittances of 200,000. So if they received 200,000, they would debit cash 200,000. Now in the income statement for the year ended December 31st, 08, what should Decker report as royalty income? Now the way you do these questions is this. Make a journal entry with changes in balances and whatever you need to make the entry balance will be your answer. All right? Now, let me erase this board. And, all right, let's make the entry for the change in balances. First of all, all right, they received royalties of 200000 So they debited cash of $200,000. Now, let's look at our other account here. Royalty receivable, all right, went from 90 to 85. So the receivable would be credited by $5,000. Now, unearned royalties, all right, unearned royalties went down. So I'll debit unearned, all right, by $20,000. That'll be a debit. All right, now, I have debits of two twenty, dollars credit of $5,000. All right. Now, what do I need to make this balance? A credit. All right. And how much is the credit? Two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. All right. Now, don't worry about what the account is. Don't worry about why I did this way. All right. Just do it. All right. It always works. And my answer there is B, as in boy, for thirty-eight. All right. And it always works. Let me show you again. All right. Look at number thirty-nine, Cook Company. Cook acquires patent rights from other enterprises and pays advance royalties, all right, in some cases, and in others, royalties are paid within 90 days after year end. The following data is including Cook's December 31st balance sheets. All right, they give you the change in the prepaid royalties and the royalties payable, and they told you during 2008, Cook remitted royalties of 300000 Now they're crediting cash 300000 In its income statement, for the year end of December 31st of 08, what should Cook report as royalty expense? And once again, they're on the accrual basis. Just make an entry for changes in account balance. Whatever you need to make that entry balance is your answer. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to credit cash for $300,000. That's our first thing. Now let's look at our first accrual account. Prepaid royalties. Went from 55 to 45. All right, so it went down 10,000. So we'll credit the prepaid account by $10,000. Now, the next thing we did is we had royalties payable. All right, they went from 80 to 75. So we're going to debit the payable because it went down by 5,000. Debit the payable by 5,000. All right, now. To get my answer, whatever we need to make this entry balance is the answer. All right? We have 310 in credits and 5,000 in debits. So what will make us balance? $305,000. All right? Is that correct? All right? So my answer should be, all right, B as in boy. B as in boy, all right? And that's the answer. All right, now, let's go to multiple choice number 42. A retail store received cash and issued gift certificates that are redeemable merchandise. The gift certificates lapse one year after they're issued. How would the deferred revenue account, all right, remember, when you sell gift certificates in advance, you debit cash and credit on earned revenue, all right? Well, that's a deferred revenue account. How would it be affected by each of the following transactions? All right, redemptions of the certificates would decrease the deferred or unearned revenue. And the lapse would also decrease the unearned revenue or deferred revenue. So my answer to 42 is B as in boy. Now let's go to 43. Jersey is a retailer of home appliances and offers a service contract on each appliance sold. 
All right? So when they sell the service contracts, they'll debit cash and credit on earned revenue. All right? Jersey sells appliances on installment contracts, but all service contracts must be paid in full at the time of sale. All right? Collections received for the service contracts should be recorded as an increase to what? Now, what are they going to credit when they sell the service contracts? All right? Now, remember, it's paid in advance, so they're going to credit a deferred revenue account. 43 is letter A. Letter A. All right? Now, let's look at all right, 44. Now, this is also a change in account balances, but it's not laid out like it is in 38 and 39. Let's look at 44. Ward is a consultant who keeps her accounting records on a cash basis. During 08, Ward collected $200,000 in fees from clients. At December 31st, 07, Ward has accounts receivable of $40,000. At December 31st, 08, Ward has accounts receivable of $60,000 and unearned fees of $5,000 on an accrual basis. What is Ward's service revenue for 08? Now, she is keeping her accounting records on a cash basis. All right? She's violating GAAP. She should keep them on an accrual basis. So let's make the entry all right, on an accrual basis for the changes in the balances. All right? Now, first of all, they want it at 1231.08. So therefore, during 08, Ward collected 200000 in fees. So what we'll do is we'll debit cash for $200,000. All right? Now, let's look at our changes and balances. At December 31st, 07, Ward had accounts receivable of 40,000. But at December 31st, 08, Ward has accounts receivable of 60,000. Now, what happened to the accounts receivable? They went up, right? By 20,000. So we'll debit accounts receivable by $20,000. Now, at the end of 08, Ward had an unearned fees. Now, they didn't have it before because they were on the cash basis. But on the accrual basis, you would show anything for income received. I'm sorry. Income that you... I'm sorry. You would show any money that was paid to you for services that has not been earned. All right? And that's the unearned fees. So, therefore, you'll credit unearned fees... And I believe it's five thousand dollars. Now, we need a credit. Now they're asking for the ward's service revenue. All right. Well, we take the two twenty debits minus five. All right. What do we need to make this balance? A credit of two fifteen. My answer to this question is C as in Charles. C as in Charles. All right. Now. Let's go to question number 47. 47. The following information pertains to Eagle Company's 2008 sales. All right. They have cash sales, gross of 80, returns and allowances of 4,000. So the cash sales for 2008 were net $76,000. Now, they also had credit sales, gross 120. 6000 for discounts so the net credit sales are what all right 114 now on january 1st 08 customers owed eagle 40000 on december 31st 08 customer owed eagle 30000 eagle uses the direct write off method for bad debts no bad debts were recorded in 08 so we don't have to worry about them under the cash base of accounting what is the amount of net revenue that Eagle should report for 08. All right. Now, under the cash basis, all right, we're going to show revenue when we receive it in cash. Now, let's start off here. All right. What they're asking for is what? They're asking for the revenue on a cash basis. Now, remember, cash basis revenue for 08 would be the revenue that was earned in 08 and collected in 08 and also it would include any revenue collected in 08 for prior years. Alright, now let's set up a T account 
after we find a better marker, let's set up a T account to see how much we collected of prior year sales. Now, the beginning accounts receivable at 1108 would be $40,000. Now, during that year, we had credit sales of 120 minus 6 or 114,000, right? So we'll debit this 114,000. So that gives us a total of $154,000. Now, they told us that at the end of December 31st, 08, Eagle was owed $30,000 by customers. So therefore, the ending balance at 1231.08 is $30,000. So therefore, all right, we collected during 08 for prior year sales $124,000. So the 124 is revenue collected in 08 for prior years. But on a cash basis, all right, what's the definition? We record revenue when it's collected, even if it's of a prior year. So we got 124. Now, we also had cash sales. Now, cash sales would be sales in cash we received in 08 for 08 services rendered. So that would be 80 minus 4 or 76,000. So we add this together and we get 200,000. So what's 200,000? The total revenue on a cash basis that we collected in 2008. So therefore my answer to number 47, 200,000 right, is D as in dog. D as in dog. All right, now, I want you to do on your own question 48. That's, once again, changes in account balances, okay? All right, now, the next thing we're going to talk about is installment sales. And we're going to start with multiple choice 54. Now, what is the installment sales method? This is what it is. Normally, we're on the accrual basis, which means that if we provide a service for someone and we didn't collect it, we would debit accounts receivable and credit sales. And then, if we knew the collectability of prior years, all right, we have to set up a provision for bad debt expense by debiting bad debt expense and crediting allowance for uncollectibles or allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, when do we use the installment sales method instead of accrual accounting? We use the installment sales method when we sell anything on credit but we do not know the collectability of our receivables to set up a bad debt expense. All right, That's one thing. So therefore, how do we then recognize revenue? We recognize revenue at the time we collect it. Now, there's two formulas in the installment sales method. And these are the two formulas. One, for realized gross profit. All right, that is Cash times, I'm sorry, let me put this back up, not cash. All right, collections times the gross profit percentage equals realized gross profit. Now, how do you get gross profit percentage? Sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. You take gross profit as a percentage of net sales, and that's my gross profit percentage. Now, there's also another type of gross profit. There is deferred <clears throat> gross profit. All right. Now, what that is is this. You take your ending accounts receivable times your gross profit percentage, and that's deferred gross profit. Now, that makes sense. Under the installment sales method, we realize profit when we collect the money times the profit percentage. All right? Deferred gross profit is the profit that is unearned. All right? So therefore, it has to be based on what we are owed at the end of the year, 
times the gross profit percentage. All right. Now, let's look at a question on that. 54. The following information pertains to Gantt's operations for the year 2008. They give us installment sales, 500. Regular sales, 300. Cost of installment sales, cost of regular sales, G&A. Collections on installment sales, 100,000. In its December 31st, 08 balance sheet, what amount should Gantt report as deferred gross profit? So which one of the formulas are we using? We're going to use the ending accounts receivable times the gross profit percentage. Now, with these questions, all right, the installment sales is always your beginning accounts receivable. So my beginning accounts receivable is $500,000. Now, we collected on those installment sales $100,000. So if we collected 100 of the 500,000, we are owed still $400,000. Now, we're going to multiply that by our gross profit percentage. All right? Now this is what we do. Take your installment sales, forget regular sales. All right? We're not dealing with regular sales. All right? We take our installment sales of 500,000 and we correct, subtract from that our cost of sales for installment sales, which is 250000 for a profit on installment sales of 250000 So we take the 250 divided by 500000 and that is 50%. So therefore, to get our deferred gross profit, take our ending receivables, 400000 times 50%, and now we'll give you a deferred gross profit of $200,000, all right? And that answer is B as in boy, B as in boy, all right? Now, let's look at question number 55. Since there is no reasonable basis for estimating the degree of collectability, Aster uses the installment method of revenue recognition for the following sales. Now, they give the sales for 08, and they give you the sales for 07. And then they give you the collections from 07 sales and 08, and 07 sales and 07. And then they give us the collection from 2008 sales, all right? Collections from 2008 sales in 2008. And then they give you the accounts that are written off. For example, from the 2007 sales, we wrote off 150,000 of those, 2008, and let me repeat that. From our 2007 sales, we wrote off as uncollectible in 2008, 150,000. From our 2007 sales, we wrote off 50,000 of those in 07. Then, for the accounts written off for our 2008 sales, we wrote off 50,000 in 08. Now, notice the gross profit percentage is 40 for 2008 sales and 30 for 2007. Now, what they want us to do is come up with the deferred gross profit in the December 31st, 08 balance sheet for 07 and 08 sales. So because they have a different gross profit percentage, you have to treat it as two separate calculations. All right, now let me show you what we're talking about here. All right, now, now we have 2007 and 2008. Now the sales will be our beginning accounts receivable. Now let's treat each year differently. Now, first of all, in 07, all right, 07, our beginning accounts receivable are $600,000. Now, let's see how much we collected of that. All right, now, of that 600,000, we collected, all right, 200,000 in, in 07 of that and 100,000 of the 07 sales in 08, so we collected $300,000. Now, how much did we write off? All right, well, this is what we wrote off. We wrote off, all right, first of all, 50,000 of 2007 sales in 2007, and 150 of 2000 sales in 08. So we wrote off $200,000. So let's get our ending receivable balance. Our ending receivable balance will be $100,000. Now, let's look at the next year. 
all right? The next year is 08, all right? Our beginning receivables will be 900,000, all right? Now, let's subtract our collections, all right? How much do we collect? Well, we collected, it looks like we collected $300,000 of 08 sales in 08, so we'll subtract $300,000. And then our write-offs, all right, would be $50,000, all right? So therefore, we wrote off in 2008, of 2008 sales, 50000 Now let's get our ending balances, all right? We got it for 07, our ending accounts receivable for 2007 sales at the end of 08 is 100000 Now, this is 900 minus 350, all right, and we get... 900 minus 350, all right, 550,000. Now, that's our any accounts receivable balance for 07 and 08 sales at the end of 08, all right? Now, we're going to multiply these by the gross profit percentages, all right? For 07, it's 30%, and for 08, it's 40%, all right? So let's see what our ending deferred gross profit is. Remember, any receivables times gross profit percentage is deferred gross profit. All right, this would be $30,000. All right, now for the second year, 08, we'll take 550 times 0.4, and that gives us 220,000. So therefore, we add the 30 to the 220, and now will give us a total deferred gross profit at the end of 08, for 07 and 08 sales, 250,000, all right? The answer is A as in Apple. I'm sorry, 200,000, 250,000, all right? 250, I am just messing up the numbers, I apologize, all right? Question number 55, the answer is, let me see what it is, D, D as in dog, thank you, D as in dog, 220 plus 30 is 250. All right? All right, now, I want you, all right, on your own to do, all right, question 56. All right, now, let me show you how easy this is. All right, it says here in 56, for the year ended December 31st, 08, cash collections and realized gross profit should be what? All right, now, what do we know? They give us two columns here, cash collections and realized gross profit. We know that cash collections times the gross profit percentage will equal realized gross profit. So what we have to do is take an answer where the cash collections times the 40% will equal the realized gross profit. All right, so we take the 400,000 cash collections in the answer and multiply it by 40%, that is 160, not a realized gross profit of 320. All right, now if we take B, 400,000 times 40% 40 is 160. That can't be right. C, 600,000 times 40% is 240. The answer's got to be what? D. D is in dog. See how easy that is? All right. Now, let's go to question 58. On December 31st, 07, Mills sold construction equipment to Drew for $1,008,000. 8. The equipment had a carrying amount of $1,002,000. Drew paid 300000 in cash. On December 31st, 07, and signed a million five note bearing interest of 10% payable in five annual installments of 300000 Mill appropriately accounts for sales under the installment method. On December 31st, 08, Drew paid $300,000 in principal and one fifty in interest for the year ended December 31st, 08. What's the total amount of revenue that Mill should recognize from the construction equipment sale and financing? Now, what you're going to have here is you're going to realize, all right, you're going to pick up his total revenue, realize gross profit, and the total interest. Now, when we do these formulas, you know, all right, first of all, we get realized gross profit. We take what? Cash collections times the gross profit percentage. Now, what that does is that gives us the realized gross profit, but our cash collections are only the principal. Now, we never use the interest income in those formulas because all the interest income that is earned that year is picked up that year. Now let's see what we have here. First of all, the sales are a million eight. The carrying amount is a million two, 